Hello folks, I uh, thought I'd make another video, it's been a while, a lot's been going on, I actually tried for several hours to make a video on New Year's, around New Year's, for like a wrap up of 2017, because so much stuff happened in the, uh, in December. So, you know, if you've been watching any of my videos, uh, you know, in my opinion, you know, most of my videos are about biblical topics. Um, and in my opinion, the Syrian uh, conflict that's been going on for about seven years, it will be seven years in March 2018. And I believe that this is seven years described in the Gog Magog War uh, for seven years of consuming of the burning of the weapons, consuming the munitions, basically, uh, in in that conflict. So you got all of the Gog Magog combatants in Syria, uh, Russia, Turkey, which is Gomer and Tagarma, uh, Persia, which would be Iran and Libya and Put, which would be like Sudan and Libyan uh, rebels that have been recruited to mercenaries basically that are fighting in Syria or did fight in Syria. Anyway, in Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39 it talks about a, a war that would precede uh, Jesus' return basically. So Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39 I believe are going on in Syria and then after that there's like s seven months of uh, basically finding the you know the casualties the victims of the war and burying them that goes on in Syria so to understand of course it's a little confusing right because they mo they name the modern state of Israel uh, Israel right when really the modern state of Israel with the capital of uh, Jerusalem would be a better representation of, of Judah, right? Because that's where the uh, Jewish uh, people generally, uh, you know, the southern kingdom of Judah uh, split from the northern tribes uh, after King Solomon. Now, un under King Solomon, it was united. And under King David, Israel was united. And uh, but uh, after Solomon, it split into a, a northern kingdom of Israel, and then, and then the southern part, uh, Judah, was the capital of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, of course, being the most important city in Israel, and and Judah, because of the faith, right? That's where the temple was, Solomon's temple. And uh, so that's a big deal that's going on right now, too, is uh, Solomon's temple. Um, so after Solomon, in, in, when, when Jesus uh, uh, lived thousands of years ago in ancient Israel, uh, the, they had rebuilt uh, the temple, and it was uh, the, the, the Herodian temple, temple uh, built by uh, Herod. Now, it's very, very important. Just last month, they reopened, or they built rather, a a temple basically because uh, the synagogues are temples. And I don't know if you've paid any attention over the years, but sometimes you'll see them call synagogues temple, like Beth Temple, or you know, some something temple. Um, but, you know, what a temple is, is basically a gathering place where people worship a deity. So, they have established a temple in the Temple Mount. It's kind of weird because it's inside of the Temple Mount. On top of the Temple Mount, there is the, um, the Islamic mosques. And that's the third most holy site in um uh, in the Islamic world, two billion people, and uh, the actual word for temple in the Greek can mean a pagan temple. It doesn't necessarily have to refer to a, 
a rebuilt uh, Jewish temple. So that's kind of a misunderstanding, I think, on a lot of people's part. And of course, Ju Jerusalem is holy. So when the Bible talks about a holy place, Jerusalem is a holy place to the Lord. And in Ezekiel chapter 23, uh, it really makes it clear that uh, how very special Jerusalem is uh, to the Creator. He, call, he refers to Jerusalem as his wife. And this makes a lot of sense when you read the last few chapters of Revelation. It makes more sense. Because it's an eternal, it becomes an eternal city. Not the one that's there now, but a ginormous uh, kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is the new Jerusalem. A giant city. And... Uh, that is going to be amazing because you know the creator he created the universe in six days he's had hundreds of thousands of days to create the new jerusalem so you can just imagine uh if he could do all this in six days uh you know what he what he's done in in hundreds of thousands of days it should be really really amazing so that's it, it, you can't really describe it because obviously you know I mean, some people say they might have visited some, you know, but I no idea. I'm just speculating. In fact, I'm just speculating about all this stuff and what I think, my opinions. But, I, you know, I try and base them on fact. And, yeah, um, thousands of years people have been looking and they've been wrong. <laughs> they weren't wrong to look. They were just wrong about their conclusions. Uh, you know, how they looked at the... Uh, the things that seem to correlate with the with the Bible, but I think uh, you know Jerusalem, or there is an Israel now. Yeah, it's really more akin to Judah than Israel, but it's you know Judah is one of the twelve tribes of Israel, so it is part of Israel. So Israel has multiple meanings, right? But if you think about it, um, after thousands of years and hundreds of generations. Everyone on earth, basically everyone, is a descendant of, of Israel, of Jacob, of the 12 tribes. I mean, just mathematically, if you do the math, everyone is a descendant of Israel. Uh, now, as far as keeping a, you know, the Old Testament faith, a lot of people keep trying to uh, keep the Old Testament faith, right? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, they're all his commandments, right? Uh, so, you know, some people make varying, varying att uh, attempts to keep his commandments. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the instruction that he, he gave in the New Testament seems to be fairly clear. To do the will of the Father, right? So to, to, to figure out whatever that is, to listen to, to God, to be willing to do his will is really important for, for people to get into that new Jerusalem. So what else is going on in the world? Well, uh, of course, again, talking about Jerusalem, you know, it's in the news. Just last month they talked about putting an embassy there and that kind of opened the floodgates. Because now Guatemala and Turkey want to put embassies in Jerusalem as well. So that's a, that's a lot of, Tur uh, a lot of uh, embassies going on there. Now, could one of those be, uh, you know, in in Matthew and Mark it says, when you see an abomination standing where it ought not to stand. So if, if Jerusalem is, a, is the holy place, right, standing in the holy place, so that's one possibility, right? You can, you can see a building. So if someone builds a, you know, really big embassy or something like that, you could see it. And so that might fulfill the, that scripture about the abomination of desolation, standing where it not, ought not to. Um, it's interesting, you know, for 70 years, people have, the nations have avoided putting their embassies in Jerusalem for a multitude of reasons. It's very interesting that it's after that 70 years. Uh, Daniel 9.24, you know, the 70 years... Uh, and 
I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos, but yeah, you know, like, uh, I think the decree for Daniel 9.25 was in, uh, let's see, June 6, no, June 14th, 1967, was on Feast of Weeks. So the word uh, week in Hebrew can mean uh, seven days, seven years, or the yearly uh, Feast of Weeks, because there's these seven feasts that the Lord has each year. And one of them is the Feast of Weeks. Uh, that's a mouthful. But few people actually keep all the feasts. Um, that's unfortunate. And part of the reason for that is, is because of the church's... Uh, well, I think... You know, there's this huge misunderstanding with the tithe. The tithe is of the increase of the land, right? So if you have increased from the land like you own the land and uh, you receive income from the land right a increase it's basically an increase of the intellectual property the creator's intellectual property uh, so if you had cattle or something and you had an increase because God designed the animals right intellectual property so he asked for a tithe of the increase of the you know plants and the animals, uh, and that tithe would be used to celebrate with your family and your friends uh, before the Lord, you know, and and and, and 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 that was the point of the tithe is to build community, and. Uh, but unfortunately, it's become this thing where, you know, they're expecting the, the, the people with an income who are earning wages to also pay a tithe. And that's not actually in the mandate. It's not in the, in the scriptures to uh, demand a tithe from every uh, laborer's wages. That's not, that's not in there. But the churches have become so dependent on it because it's corrupt. Uh, corrupt societies, corrupt governments, uh, corrupt scams, basically, that, you know, like the the land prices are highly inflated, right, because of the um, mortgage scam, which is a scam, right, they're charging interest just so people can own homes, and then the government gets a piece of it, right, because you pay, people pay property taxes on the on the land, so there's no incentive for the government to, I mean, it's, it's an incentive for the government to facilitate the mortgage Ponzi scheme, right, and keep it going, because the higher the more house prices, the more the government gets in property taxes. So, yeah, I mean, it's, and that is affecting the churches. I don't know if they have to pay property taxes. Uh, they may, I don't, in some places, depending on the nation or state. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, I don't know, that's kind of a recap. I just wanted to cover some stuff that uh, has been going on in the last couple of months that was kind of a big deal. All right, guys uh, and girls, uh, best regards. I uh, hope to uh, see you in the new Jerusalem.